Todd Wheatley here from Canada Realty Boston. In this video, I'm going to break down what a commercial loan or term sheet looks like. This is a little bit different than what you would see on a residential loan, but many of our investors um, who are looking to expand into commercial real estate or rental properties that are larger than four units um, will need a commercial loan. So this is how you, I'm gonna walk through a, an actual term sheet that I've used, um, break down each section, um, explain what each section is, and just keep in mind every bank has um, a slightly different format, but the general content is going to be the same. So um, upon sending a request to your commercial bank, explaining your project, typically you'll send them a write-up on why you're interested in the property, you should include a financial analysis, including a, um, an analysis, and you can see one of our other videos on how to do those analysis. Um, but the more you can demonstrate to the bank uh, that you've taken a look at the property, you understand how it's performing financially, and you're explaining what your business plan is, the better off you will be. Once you send that request to the, your loan officer, they will issue um, a term sheet. And We'll use this one from Workers Credit Union. I have a good relationship with the folks over there. Um, they've issued term sheets on several projects that we've we've purchased and, and many that we've taken shots at but haven't purchased. So I'm very familiar with their format. Um, the top section is just kind of an introduction. Thank you for letting us loan on this um, or, or issuing this term sheet on the property. Uh, obviously, it sets forth many conditions. This is not a commitment. This is just a uh, an intent that we will work with you to secure the loan if you were to get the property under agreement. I've redacted some of the personal information that I didn't want in the video. It's not, it's not important for the sake of this video. Just keep in mind, you know, there'll be additional data points, uh, names, addresses, property address, things like that, that will be on your term sheet. So you'll see the borrower name at the top. This is um, typically needs to be an LLC or other legal entity. You, you uh, nearly certainly cannot take title um, or secure the loan in a personal name with a commercial bank. So you'll want to keep that in mind. You will have um, guarantors. So these are the individuals that are members of the LLC that will be personally guaranteeing the loan if that's applicable. Some loans have personal guarantees and some don't. And as you can see, some are unlimited and some are un, uh, unconditional. That will be up to your relationship with the bank and your experience. Um, but this is these are the people that are personally guaranteeing the loan if you were to default. In the next section, we have loan amount. So this is... Uh, Set in this particular example, it's seventy-five percent of the purchase price or the as-is appraised value. That can vary. That can sometimes be seventy percent, seventy-five percent. We actually got this term sheet revised up to eighty percent. Um, so keep in mind that that uh, loan to cost or loan to value will change um, depending on your conversation and relationship with your loan officer. But this will explain the loan amount. The purpose, what is, what is the mortgage going to be used for? What is the loan going to be used for? Uh, in our case, it was a, uh, a specific property. And then you see kind of a general source and use of funds explaining you know, how much the borrower needs to bring, 542000 how much the bank will bring in a mortgage, $1,575,000. And then you'll see on the right-hand side, purchase price, purchase price, origination fee, and estimated closing costs. Just just outlining kind of where all the funds will uh, need to come from and what they'll what they will be used for. Then we get into the specifics of the actual mortgage, and again, this will vary depending on the bank, um, what their appetite for loans are on your on your asset type, and what your relationship and experience is with that bank. In this particular example, this is a ten year loan. Typically, commercial loans will be five, seven, or 10 years. That's a generality, but those are kind of the three most common lengths. The interest rate will be fixed for a period of five years at 4%, and then it's adjustable. And they explain the adjustable nature of it in the next paragraph. They explain what um, index or rate 
you will be adjusted on beginning in that in this particular term sheet in that sixth year. So you can see the interest rate shall reset at 2.5% over the applicable index. And then they tell you which index. So depending on what uh, interest rates do, you know, in five years, this 4% fixed, fi you know, fixed rate for the first five years might be great. But this could very quickly go up if the underlying indexes have moved up in the first five years. So this is this is a major difference between commercial loans and residential loans. Typically, residential loans will be fixed for 15, 20, 25, or 30 years, unless you use an adjustable rate mortgage, but most commonly it's fixed rate. With commercial loans, it's usually fixed for a period of time, and then it's adjustable after that period. So very much pay attention to this, and very much do your own research and um, analysis on where you think um, interest rates will go in the future and how that would impact the performance of the subject property. They explain how interest would be calculated on, a, on an actual 30, 360 basis. This is just an accounting um, uh, methodology, so it doesn't make a huge difference, but you'll want to understand that. Amortization. So this is, although it's a 10-year note, it is amortized over 30 years. And so that's very attractive to me that's very attractive because it helps um it helps keep my debt service uh relatively low if it were to be uh, amortized over 10 or 15 or 20 years the debt uh, service on a monthly basis would be much higher so um this is very this is a very attractive loan product to me 10 years in length and 30 year amortization then they explain the payments so the initial monthly principal and interest payments are to be this amount. That's pretty straightforward. Collateral, this is where they explain, and again, these are for real estate assets, so they explain that they will take a first position loan on the subject property. In the, in the event that you were to default, they would foreclose on the property and take possession. Origination fees, again, this is very different than residential loans. Origination fees, or points as they are often called, are applied to, uh, these, are, these are fees as a percentage of the overall loan amount that you pay typically at closing. In certain circumstances, you pay at the back side of the project, but if it's a rental property or a long-term project, it's typically paid at closing. I've done the math here, so 0.5% of the loan amount is $7,875. And again, you would see this on the settlement statement as a closing cost when you close on the property. This can range. 0 0.5 is very attractive for a commercial bank. I've seen 1%, 1.5%, and even up to 2% or higher with hard money or non-commercial uh, bank lend uh, lender, um, non-commercial banks. Prepayment penalty is none. To me, this is very important. Um, given, I may I may want to hold the property for ten years, but I may you know I may get an offer I can't I can't refuse just two or three years in. Uh, the market's moving very quickly. I, I do not like prepayment penalties, if at all possible, and so this explains that there is not one on this term sheet. Good faith deposits. So these are typically upon signing the term sheet, you would send in the good faith deposit. This is used to pay for things like the appraisal and underwriting fees. Uh, these these fees do get, or excuse me, this this fund or this this money, anything that's left over is applied towards your closing costs or is refundable if you um, ultimately do not close on the property minus any of the uh, costs that you've already. Uh, spent. So for example, this is a $5,000 good faith deposit. If the appraisal costs $3,000 and you didn't close, you'd get $2,000 back. And again, have that conversation with your loan officer to make sure you understand what this deposit is. Financial covenants. This explains that uh, they, the bank expects the property to perform at a certain debt service coverage level. Uh, we're not going to cover debt service Cover, uh, debt service coverage in this particular video. Um, I'll do a separate video on that, but they do expect uh, most banks are in the 1.2 to 1.3x range, meaning that the uh, cash flow more than covers the debt service on the property. Um, and basically, this this helps the bank under, uh, get you know understand that 
the debt service will be taken care of from the property itself and that the borrower doesn't need to inject additional capital into the project just to cover the debt service. Loan to value, again, this was a 75% LTV term sheet. This just explains that. Again, this can change depending on your specific situation. Legal documentation is pretty uh, self-explanatory. Environmental assessments ex you know, explains any additional documents or questionnaires that you might need to complete along with this term sheet. Very standard. Financial reporting. Each year, borrowers typically will need to send in their tax returns um, and other uh, property-specific financials, things like rent rolls, P&L, um, and other financials to the bank for review um, to ensure that the property is in good standing and being run to plan. Make sure you understand these requirements and expectations prior to signing the term sheet. Membership. This is typical. Typically, commercial banks will want you to open um, operating accounts, checking savings accounts with the bank, um, and run the finances for the property um, from that bank. This is, you know, you can have a conversation with the bank um, if you already have a deposit uh, deposit banking relationship. If not, um, you just want to make sure you fully understand this and how it may impact your, uh, you know, your um, processes for paying bills, paying mortgages, and paying other expenses related to your properties. And again, just some additional covenants here. No junior mortgages. They don't want to see additional. They have a first position lien on the property. They don't want to see junior or second position liens. That's very straightforward and common. Some, just some additional language that you want to read just to make sure you understand what you need to submit to the bank, what they'll be reviewing during underwriting and what you should expect. And that is it. So it really is just a term sheet, term letter outlining the arrangement. If you were uh, in agreement with it, you would sign it down the bottom, down here, both as a guarantor and as the borrower, which is typically the manager or, um, or one of the members of your LLC, depending on your entity setup. And that's it. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions, drop a comment in the uh, in the down below or reach out to me directly and I'll be happy to talk through this more specifically with you or review a term sheet if you have one. All right, have a nice day.